guys we are in the cabin blind it's close to the cabin um, on tap for tonight is to try to shoot that doe that uh, very first doe that I shot in the uh, I guess it was in the left front shoulder <laughs> trying to remember which side it hit um, so we got about a 20 yard shot to the feeder uh, can shoot beyond that a little bit so uh, stay tuned hopefully we'll get this doe down um, on camera we'll see what happens <laughs> maybe on camera twice maybe <laughs> so uh, sit tight relax and uh, hope you enjoy the scent from nothing he spoke into existence everything that is and he's made us his stewards of all that is his to have a lot of horses in my yard I used to shoe horses and train them and sell them as well uh, so I've seen a lot of these different models over the years in uh, in feeding horses but the same concept or principle works with feeding deer as well now you can go out and pay fifty to a hundred dollars for one of those feeders very easily and you could do that but you get for about two dollars or so two dollars in parts and material wire, uh, galvanized wire, and uh, sheetrock screws. You can build this out of cedar. Just cut down some cedar, find some cedar that's kind of curved. And there's lots of that around because this country's overrun with it. And uh, build yourself a feeder just like this. And uh, the key to uh, supplemental feeding deer is making sure that uh, what you feed them is high protein. Uh, they need about 16% protein, and alfalfa hay does that. Now, alfalfa alfa hay is not what you want to feed horses. Horses need about 8% protein. I used to shoe horses, and I used to see a lot of problems with foundering, um, foundering the feet. So uh, that's because people feed alfalfa hay. Don't ever feed alfalfa hay to your horse. They need grass hay. Grass is about 8%. Anyways, that's for another show. <laughs> but uh, just thought I'd give you a quick tip on this. A uh, cheap tip for making yourself a uh, hay deer feeder. I've been seeing this doe from the cabin quite a bit. And she was quite regular on the camera, so I thought it was time to try to redeem myself. Didn't take long, and she showed up right on cue almost. Uh, before the sun even went down, so I had plenty of time to sit and wait for her to get in position to take a shot.
target and put it out there and see where I'm off. All right, this is very, very frustrating. Everything's the same. Target out in front, exactly where the deer stood about 10 minutes ago. Let's see what happens. I know I shot over that deer's back. Long shot. I can't believe that. Ugh! There is a difference between shooting at a live deer and a target. It's called the heart when it's pounding out your chest. Anyway, we'll have that deer to shoot again, hopefully. Maybe my kids can do it, because I sure can't kill that deer. Well, guys, after uh, looking at that video, I'm, I'm not so upset about that shot anymore, just by the mere fact that that deer ducked that arrow. That was a dead deer when that arrow was released, but she ducked so deep that it missed right over the top. I also failed to realize that I, I had my PSE Brute X rather than my PSE Omen. And uh, that PSE Omen uh, shoots so much faster. I shoot straight on. I just aim at the deer where I'm going to hit. And that deer uh, with the PSE Omen doesn't have time to duck at 20 yards. But uh, obviously the PSE Brute is slow enough that a deer can duck the arrow. So I should have shot a little lower. I should have aimed for the lower third of the body of that deer. And uh, I'm sure I would have... Uh, had a dead deer on my hands, but I can't kill that deer. Maybe my kids can. Um, in closing out, we're not going to be back until probably next uh, post on the YouTube channel. It's probably going to be mid-December or so uh, because we got to go to the East Coast. We're going to be gone for a couple of weeks, so you won't see uh, many postings uh, until then. But I wanted to close out by a, uh, having a, a quick follow-up on the... Uh, episode I did, actually just the episode prior to this one, I think it was episode 10, uh, on uh, the Cabela's uh, Ultimate and Windshield, Windshear or Windshield uh, clothing. Uh, that stuff is definitely not bow hunting material. You want If you haven't seen episode 10, you're going to want to go back and watch it. But I want to show you how I layer up since the weather's getting cold now. And this is probably not going to relate to you guys in Minnesota because you're going to have to figure your own stuff out there. It's just too cold for my body up there. But uh, down here in Texas, this is the way I, I do it during cold weather. And this uh, first layer that I put on is good down to about uh, 35 degrees, maybe 32. Once it gets past 32, I have to do some other things. But uh, basically, I just have a uh, pair of Wrangler jeans and then underneath a pair of co uh, nice thick cotton long johns. And I wear two wool blend socks and 800 grams of Thinsulate in a hunting boot. And uh, that gets me pretty good on the bottom half, um, down to about 40 degrees. Then if it gets down to under 40 degrees, I, uh, I just bought pajamas, is what this is. Just a pair of pajamas, uh, $10 from Walmart. And uh, I, it's large enough, I can slip it on over my boots, uh, over my pants, that's good down to about 32 degrees. Uh, then the bottom half, if it gets lower than 32 degrees, I've got to go to something like this, a, a coverall. But this one's really quiet. This is from Bass Pro Shop. Uh, it's outside is cotton. Inside is the insulated stuff. And the inside is cotton as well. So it's really a, a quiet material. It doesn't scare the gear away. Now also uh, down to 35, 32 degrees or so on the top layer, I just wear a simple cotton long sleeve shirt like this. That's the first layer. The second layer is going to be any kind of uh, t-shirt just to give my core a little bit more warmth here. Uh, sometimes I'll even put two t-shirts on if, it's, if it gets down to 32 or so. Uh, then I also, uh, on top of that, I layer sweatshirts depending on how cold it is. If it's 45, 50 degrees, I don't put to, uh, as many. But sometimes I'll put up to three sweatshirts. I have enough for three sweatshirts, but usually I just put two sweatshirts if it's about 32 degrees. And then I put this, and these sweatshirts are about $7 a piece at Walmart. And then uh, I bought this at Walmart as well, $20 for an insulated... Um, <clears throat> Uh, fleece. And so it's fleece on the outside, it's got insulation on the inside, 
And this thing is really, really warm. Uh, it usually gets me down to about 35 degrees. And then I have a $10 fleece from Walmart as well that sometimes I'll put over the top if it's getting down to about 32 degrees. And so this stuff is really, really quiet. You can move around in it and you're not going to, it'll be like the deer can't even hear you. And so this, this is my uh, gear for getting down that, that level. Now, uh, whatever I'm wearing, I'm always wearing my, seeing this a lot, when it gets warmer, because this is too, too warm to wear in actually cold, uh, warmer weather. Uh, you just sweat like crazy in it. But I bought an extra large, a little bit oversized uh, for me. I usually wear a large, um, but uh, this thing is actually really warm, and I put this over whatever I'm wearing, and it adds another layer of, of uh, warmth for your core. And it's got all your bow stuff in here. I'll do a bow review of this, or actually a review of this, but this is from, uh, in a future episode, this is from Cabela's. It's, it's really great stuff. This uh, Cabela's bow hunting vest is what that is, and I think they copied that off of the Primos idea. Um, if you ever watch the Primos videos, but uh, but it's a great copy, if it, even if it is a copy. So that's uh, getting down to about 32 degrees, uh, and and this stuff, if I layer up enough, I can get down to probably about 25 degrees. But once it gets past 32 degrees, I've got to do something for my feet, and so I have those Arctic warmers. I'll just slip over my boot. So. Uh, Hope you enjoyed that little follow-up on, on warm, nice, quiet, warm weather. Uh, 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 warm clothing, not warm weather, but warm clothing for the cold weather. Uh, so, uh, again, we'll see you probably about mid-December on our next, uh, our next upload. And I'm hoping you're enjoying these videos. Be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't seen the other videos, remember this is an ongoing story. So. Uh, I would go back and, and watch all the episodes, send all the links to your friends uh, if you enjoy this, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.